All right, for this video, we are going to learn the workflow of just editing your files and putting them into a commit. And, and what is a commit? A commit is that snapshot that we can always go back to if we need to get a previous version of a file. Remember, this is version control software. So let's take a look at one command first that will always tell us where we're at as far as our status in the git universe and that command is git status so down here in our git window you can see we're in the my web folder and i have the my web folder over open over here too so we're so we're in that my web repo okay we're on the main branch we talked about the branch and uh earlier i mentioned that Sometimes you'll see this called master. Sometimes you'll see it called main. The new default that people are tending to use now is main. So we're going to use main in this course. So let's do our git status on this repo. And it says we're on the main branch. We don't have any commits yet. And we don't have anything to commit because we don't have any files in here to track. Okay. So let's put some files in here to track. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to right click in here. And I'm going to say new. Let's do a text file. So I'm going to do a text document. And I am going to call this because it is good practice and use capital letters readme.md. And MD is a markdown file. We've, if you've done HTML, you know that's a markup language. Well, markdown is a very simplified markup language. Um, yeah, we want to change the name of this file extension because we're it's a we're going to, it's a markdown file. And you'll see later when we get to GitHub that this file is displayed by default when you go to a, a repo on your web-based repository. Okay, once we start uploading these things up to the internet, this file will come in. So I'm going to go in here and edit this. I'm going to edit it with Notepad++ and I'm not going to go a lot into what a markdown file can have in it. I'll teach you a couple things as we go. And one of them, headings, are hashtags. So I'm just going to type a, a heading. And if we don't use anything in front of it, it's just text. This is where we keep our files okay and I'll save that okay. so we have our readme file now we have a file added we just edited it let's go down here and do our git status again git status okay. no we're still on the main branch we haven't done any commits yet we have one untracked file Okay, untracked files, and it says use git add in the name of the file to include in what will be committed. Okay, so readme git recognizes that we've added a file to this directory, but we aren't really tracking it. Git is ignoring it. It knows it's there, but it's going to ignore it. Okay. So how can we get git, get git to pay attention to this file? All right. So that's our next command, and it's already told us what to use. <clears throat> git add in the file name. So I will show you this, git add. And then we include the file name of a file that we want to add to something called the staging area. Okay, The staging area is where we put files that we intend to commit later. Okay. So there's a little workflow that goes on with this, and I'm going to show you a graphic of that in a minute. So git add the file name. But there's another one I also want to mention, and that's git add dot. Okay. So if we want to add a single file, we use git add in the file name. If we want to add all the files that have been changed or updated, we use git add with a dot after it. So let's add some notes here in our little note file. 
that shows us the status of our repo and get add. And I'm copying and pasting these from another document I have open. Get add adds a single file to our staging area. And get add with a dot adds all the modified files to the staging area. So let's add this readme to our staging area. So I'm going to type git add readme.md. And then let's look at our status again. Excuse me, git status. Okay. And now it says readme, notice it's in red now. Still on branch main, we haven't done any commits yet. Changes to be committed. We're going to commit this file. Okay, so we add files to the commit, and then the last step is to actually commit the file. So, how do we do that? Um, there's a couple ways to do that as well. So get commit, commits changes to the repo. This is the point in time when we type git commit. This is the time when we take that snapshot, that picture. This is the moment we'll be able to come back to. Um, so let's do this, git commit. Now when I do this, it's going to open up my default text editor. If you remember when we installed it, I set my default text editor to be Notepad++. So I'll say git commit, and I'll hit enter, and it opens up Notepad++, and it asks us to please enter a commit message for my changes, okay? So we should always include a message about what changes we've made when we do a commit. And we might have done some big changes. Hey, I added this brand new feature. In this case, I just added a readme file. So my message is going to be added a readme.md file. Okay, and I'm going to save this and close it. And as soon as I do, it says one file changed. There was two insertions. Um, and I'll, we'll see how to look at those later. Let's do a clear now. Let me do a git status. And now it says we're on branch main, nothing to commit, our working tree is clean. Because the file that we've edited has been staged, added to the staging area, and then it has been committed to the repo. So we just took that snapshot, and this process is going to continue repeatedly. We're going to add or edit files. We'll stage them and then commit them. Add or edit some files, stage them and commit them. And that's basically the workflow we're gonna keep following. And I'm gonna show you a little graphic of that. All right, for the files, we're going to add and edit our files. Then we add them to the staging area. And then once we get our files just how we want them and select the files we want, we commit them. And we, actually I should have a big arrow on this graphic pointing back at the beginning, because after we commit them, we go back and we add, it, add and edit more files. Um, when we're ready, we add them to the staging area, and then we commit them. All right, so we're gonna repeat that process. That's, uh, I got another graphic I want to shoot, but I think I'm going to wait. Let's do a new command. Let's do git log. I'll add that to my text editor up here for my notes. Git log, what does git log do? It shows us our commit history. So it actually shows us the things we've committed. I'm going to git log. Okay. And it says right here, that there was a commit and it assigns it this big long random hash code for a number. 
That's a unique number. No other commit will ever have that number. Um, and we can use that later on. You'll, you'll see how we use that if we want to go back in time. All right. So what was my commit message? Added a readme file. It tells me who the author was, the date I added it, and the time. So let's do another commit. Let's do some more editing. And I have some files ready that I want to use for this example. Where did I put them though? All right, I'm just going to copy these files over and I'm going to paste them in here. Paste them into my web directory. This is my repo. Okay, so I have a little index page. If I do that, it's a, it's a page we used in a previous video on web, web development. So I added my index file. Um, inside the CSS folder, there's a CSS document. Um, inside the images folder, there's a couple images I used on that web page. So I've done some additions, right? I created an index file. I just copied it this time, but you know, we worked on our website and now we have these files in here. Let's go back over here and do git status. And you can see that it lists, hey, we have a folder, and there's files in the folder, obviously, that have been changed. We have this folder with images in it. We have these. We did our edits. What's our next step? When we're ready, hey, I got my website how I, how I want it at this stage. Uh, I, I want to make, make that snapshot. I want to make that node, that, that, that spot I can come back to if I screw something up in the next step. So git add. And remember I told you we can do one file at a time or if we do the dot, it'll add all those files at the same time. Okay. And it tells us something I mentioned earlier. Line feeds will be placed, replaced by control line feeds, which is fine. It's just another format for text. Get status. And you can see all those files that we looked at these all these files that we've added and edited are going to be added are in the next commit so we took these files that we had edited we've added them to the staging area and now we're going to commit them okay this time i'm going to use a different version of git commit okay and let me type it up here so you can see what it is And it's a little bit longer, so I'm going to move these out. Okay, so this one is git commit, except this time we're going to use a dash m, and that lets us type a message right on the same line. Okay, so if we have a short message that we want to type about the about this current commit, okay, rather than this command which opens up our text editor, we can do a quickie little message and, and bypass the text editor just by using dash M and then in quotes type our message. I'm going to do that. Git commit dash M, it's a lowercase m, um, added my web files. Okay, that's my message. So these files in the staging area are going to be committed with this message. Let me clear the screen and do a git status. I'm on the branch main. The working tree is clean. I don't have any edits. Everything's been added. Let's do a git log. Okay. And we can see our two commits. So here's our first commit that we did when I added the readme file. And then here's my second commit that I did when I added all my web files. Right, we've done a we've done two commits. Show you another graphic. So initially we initialized our repo. Okay, then I added the README file and we did a commit. Okay, so we're going to keep following this workflow. We're going to add and edit some files, move them to the staging area, commit them. Now we can go in and add and edit some more files. We'll move them to the staging area and commit them. 
Each one of these spots where we do a commit is in our history. And if I want to go back to when I only had the readme file in my repo, there is a way I can force the system to go back. And we'll talk about that later. Okay. I'm not going to do that right now. For now, we want to get in the habit of add and edit our files, stage the files, commit them. And as we're working on our project, every time we get to a, a, a next milestone, maybe we've added a new feature. If we're working on a web page, hey, maybe we got our header done. Let's do a commit. And then we'll work on our navigation menu. And after we get the navigation menu done, we'll do a commit. But it's the same process over and over. You'll be typing the same commands. It's really, you initialize it. And once you've initialized it, you just work on your files. Every once in a while, do a git add dot. And then do a git commit dash m with a message. Those are the two commands I use most of the time, right? I, I hit a new milestone, git add dot, git commit with a message. And we just do that over and over and over. Later on, we'll worry about how to go back in time. One last command I want to show you is that you notice when we do this, each of our commits, it's got quite a bit of information there. And usually we don't care about all of this stuff. All we ever want to see is the commit number and the message. So there is one more command that I want to show you. We're looking at your commits and it's still a git log, but it has a switch. Notice it has two dashes, git log dash dash one line. Okay. Shows, it shows me the same information as this log, but it shows it with just one line each. So let me do this one, git log dash dash one line. Okay. And you can see, I can see both my commits it uses an abbreviated version of the hash. It's only got the first um, seven letters of the hash. So if these seven letters up here are the same as those seven letters. So here's my first commit where I added a readme file. Here's the second commit where I added my web files. If I go in now and edit, let's edit my, my web page. I'm going to change the title of my web page to my um, amazing web page. Okay, I do some more editing. I'm going to do that change. And that's enough. I made one change. You might make 10 changes, but when you're done, you save your file. Okay. Come back over to your Git screen. If you want to look at the status. Okay. So it, it knows that I've modified my index file now. So I'm going to do the same commands. Git add dot. Git commit dash M in my message. Um, modified the title. I think that's what I did. Edit your files, add them, commit them. Edit some more, add and commit. Git log. I want to show you one other thing. If you use your up arrow, it'll go back through your old commands. So I want to do git log one line again. I just hit my up arrow a few times and there it is. Sometimes that saves you from having to retype a long command. Okay, now I can see I have three commits. Here's where I added the readme. Here's where I added my initial web files. Here's the last one I did where I modified the title. And you can see we're at the head of our main branch. This is where we're working right now. All right, so start working, get your website. You have the files on your computer already somewhere. Take this my web folder. Put your files in here, do a commit. If you want to work on your website a little bit, you can do a couple commits if you want. And just practice over and over. Work on files like you always did, add them, commit them.